What is the very latest on radio listening recovery from COVID-19? And what's the latest on consumer movement and commuting and vehicular traffic? Hi, everybody. I'm Pierre Bouvard, Chief Insights Officer here at Cumulus Media and Westwood One. Today, we're going to share with you a lot of brand new data that's just published over the last week, focusing on April. We're going to look at the state of consumer spending, the state of consumer concern over COVID, radio listening recovery, and consumer movement in the form of vehicular traffic. We've got a lot of great information to share with you. We're going to jump right in with the just released Nielsen April portable people meter data. It just came out last Thursday. So Nielsen has been releasing this data monthly. They're benchmarking and indexing each month against March of 2020 as kind of the comparison point of pre-COVID. Here we're looking at reach among persons 12 plus. The very latest April number is a 98% reach recovery index. That means radio reach is 98% of what it was pre-pandemic, which is spectacular. Now you can see the impact of COVID last spring on radio audiences. There definitely was a dip in April and May. There was a recovery into late spring and summer. There was a big COVID flare up in November that caused a lot of states to go back into lockdown in November, December, which caused a dip. But ever since the beginning of the year, radio reach has recovered and recovered strongly. That's AQH, that, that's, excuse me, this is reach here. Now let's look at AQH, average core hour persons, in the portable people meter markets. You see that same pattern, big dip in spring, recovery over the summer, a downtick due to the November flare up. But ever since the beginning of the year, AQH in the portable people meter markets is up 10%. We're now at a 95% index versus pre-COVID, the highest point since the pandemic tied with October of 20. Now, what about the Nielsen diary markets? Outside the top 50 markets, Nielsen measures hundreds of markets using the personal diary. We've been telling you all year that the pandemic was really a major market affair. It did not impact radio listening barely at all outside the top 50 markets, and you can see the hard data here. This is reach in the continuously measured diary markets. A slight, and I mean slight downtick last spring, quick recovery into summer. We're now at a 101 reach recovery index. The reach is actually a little bit bigger than pre-pandemic, and AQH is just about the same story uh, in the diary markets. Now, why, why is all this occurring? It really has to do with consumer movement. Here we're looking at Geopath data. Geopath is the Nielsen of the outdoor advertising industry, and they capture vehicular traffic in the form of miles traveled. And they compare monthly miles traveled in the current month to the same month in the prior year. So all the way to the left of your screen, you can see coming into February of 2020, Miles traveled was actually up 6% versus the prior year. Then came the spring lockdown and vehicular traffic in April of 20 really dropped, 39% drop versus the prior year. It recovered strongly into spring and summer, but it's still throughout the rest of the year, it was bouncing around 10% or low uh, or, or, or more below norms. Then we had the November flare up. And January and February saw 16% less vehicular traffic. But the last couple of months have seen a very strong recovery in miles traveled. April saw a 67% increase versus the prior year. Now, where does that put us versus 2019? Well, in the circle, you can see that the April 21 miles traveled is 1% higher than April of 19. So what this means is American car traffic has completely recovered versus prior levels. Another way to look at this is through the Apple Maps car trip search 
trend. They have this very cool website indicated at the bottom of your screen. You can put in any state, country, or major city, and it compares current trip requests for auto trips versus pre-pandemic period, which is a day in January 2020, January 13th, and everything is indexed against then. You see the same pattern, a drop off last spring, strong recovery into summer, a dip towards the end and the beginning of last year due to the COVID flare up and the subsequent lockdowns in a number of different states. And whoa, the last couple of months have seen a significant uptick in car trip search requests into Apple Maps. We now are at 36% more car trip search requests into Apple versus pre-pandemic, which is just spectacular. Now, how many Americans are commuting every day? How many Americans are commuting some days? And how many Americans are still working from home? Well, that was the question that a company called Advertiser Perceptions put to a group of 300 agencies and advertisers just a few months ago. And the people that spend the money on American media felt that about a third of Americans were commuting daily, a third some days, and a little over a third were working from home every day. So that is the perception. What's the reality, according to the US Federal Reserve April 2021 Consumer Tracker, which examines commuting? Well, as you can see, there is a pretty big disconnect between advertiser agency perceptions and the reality of the actual American commuting patterns, according to the US Federal Reserve. So how many Americans are commuting every day? Twice as many as the advertiser agency perception, 62 versus 33. So there are twice as many commuters that's perceived by agencies and advertisers. So dramatic under estimation. Now on the commuting some days and commuting from home every day, agencies and advertisers are vastly overestimating how many Americans are working from home by almost a two to one basis, 38 versus 20. Now in a typical month pre-pandemic, the Federal Reserve says about eight or 9% of American workers are working from home. So we're still about 10, 12% more people working from home uh, than previous. Obviously, we'll be watching that number uh, as we go into the fall, but suffice to say the number of commuters is uh, much stronger uh, than agencies and advertisers suspect. Now, what is the degree of concern that Americans have for COVID? Well, one of the great ways to understand consumer interest in anything is something called Google search trends, and you can search your business or your category for free on Google search trends. And so we've been tracking the index of people that are searching for the word COVID over the last 14 months or so. And you can see early February last year, barely any Americans were searching for the term COVID. That rocketed up for sure in March and April. It dipped coming into spring. Then we had a summer flare up that took the index to 82, the index hit a high of 100 in November. And ever since then, the index of search terms in Google for COVID has been dropping and dropping and dropping. And as of the latest read here in, um, uh, in May, we're now at a 40 index. So basically, uh, we're 60% below norm. Now, what's happening in the economy? Moody's Analytics has created something called the Back to Normal Index. It basically takes dozens and dozens of different economic measures and rolls them all up into one big index. They're looking at things like the labor market, consumer spending, travel, uh, uh, housing, lots of different things. So pre-pandemic, the index was obviously pegged to 100. It dropped to 60 during the April-May lockdown. It recovered into the mid-70s in spring, got into the low 80s over the summer into fall. And as of late, it's really jumped up to an 88 index. So we're still 12% off pre-pandemic levels, but for sure 
it's heading in the right direction. Now, how can advertising help your business on the road to recovery? Well, one of my absolutely favorite charts comes out of an ad agency in London, Adam and Eve DDB. Their head of effectiveness is a gentleman by the name of Les Bennett. Les has been called one of the godfathers of marketing effectiveness. And his visual shows sales on the up and down vertical axis, time left to right horizontally. The blue line are businesses that advertise and what their sales is. The gray line are businesses that don't advertise. And so you can see coming out of a recovery or coming into a recovery, even if your business doesn't advertise, sales will grow. Supply is being restored. The herd mentality of consumer shopping is increasing and that rises and raises all boats. However, businesses that advertise in blue, every step of the way, see higher sales for their business. In the short term, medium term, and long term, those businesses that advertise see higher and higher sales. Now, what is the right media to put your money in if you're going to advertise? Which media has people that are ready to shop and ready to spend? In March, Nielsen conducted a study asking Americans across dozens of different shopper categories where they would spend their money in the next month. So going across the top left to right, you see the percentage of Americans overall that said they would shop in the particular category. Then you see that response among heavy TV viewers, podcast listeners, and then heavy AM and FM listeners. Now, regardless of the category, it is audio listeners that are ready to spend fast and first. So take a look at something like planning or booking a vacation. 22% of Americans say they're gonna do that. Among heavy TV viewers, less, 17% say. Podcast listeners, 33%. Heavy AM and FM radio listeners, 24%. So audio, audio is where the shoppers are. Audio consists of people more likely to spend across many, many categories. Now, why is this? Well, the profile of the heavy audio user is bigger households, mom and dad working, and kids in the household. These are households that spend more on everything. The heavy TV viewer, small households, kids are gone, empty nesters, retired. Think of your grandparents. They don't spend as much. So audio is where you're gonna find the major purchasers. Charlie Rudd is the CEO of Lear Burnett London, and he probably was thinking of radio when he made the following statement. He said, the advertising industry builds businesses by creating large customer numbers keen to buy into what a brand offers. We mobilize and persuade large groups of people to act. It'll be our contribution to rebuilding businesses and creating new jobs for many. It will come from large, broadly targeted brand marketing campaigns that emphasize and inspire a nation yearning for recovery and positivity. It's what we do best and it's what business needs from us right now. I think a great sentiment. So to recap, Radio listening levels are currently at the highest point since the pandemic, according to the PPM markets and according to the diary markets. Year to date, PPM AQH is up 10%. Across the various sources of consumer movement, vehicular traffic, Geopath, Apple Maps, the Federal Reserve commuter study, everything is at record levels and large proportions of Americans are now commuting full time. Concern over COVID is subsiding, according to the Google search trends, and economic indicators from the Moody's Back to Normal Index shows a strong performance. We're still 12 points below pre-pandemic, but heading in the right direction. And across a whole bunch of different purchase categories, audio listeners, audio, audio, audio. Audio is the soundtrack of the American recovery. 
And podcasting and AM FM radio is where you need to put your money to get customers back to your website and into your store. Each and every Monday, we post a new audio insight like this or a brand new case study. We post it in two places on the cumulusmedia.com uh, blog. You can find it at the bottom of the page or you can find it over on westwood1.com. The blog is located in the top right hand corner. You also have the ability to put your email in if you'd like to get the case studies or audio insights in your email each and every Tuesday. We thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you the very latest on the recovery of the American economy, the recovery of consumer movement, and the recovery of radio listening.